Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Coffee Break Podcast hosted by myself, Jama, and I'm Slim. And before we get started, please make sure to follow all our social media pages in the description below. Uh, our Instagram, our TikTok, our, our YouTube. Make sure to subscribe and like. And let's get started. So today's topic podcast, you know what I want it to be? I wanted to talk about happiness. And the reason why I want to talk about happiness is because it's such a broad topic. And everybody on the planet has their own individual happiness on what makes them happy you know yeah and the thing is i watched a study and the study was talking about how different ways that people kind of categorize their happiness and it's always about money it's always about status it's always about what happening on instagram you know yeah and it's like do those things actually make you happy you know what i mean so i want to ask you this question right now okay what makes you happy Okay, right on the spot. <laughs> to be honest with you, it is, it's a tough question though. Like, to, I understand why these people are saying like money and stuff. Cause like, first things first, like everybody, like on a day to day basis, you're probably thinking, yo, like I need to make some bread. I need to pay these bills. And like money is a constant issue in people's lives. So I can understand why they would be frazzled to think that. But if you're really asking me, bro, it's, it's just about like, to be honest with you, my family, like, if I'm spending time with my family, hanging out with them, you know, like mm-hmm. it, any anything could be going on that's like, you know, interruptive or intrusive in my life. As long as I can just chill at home, my family and just kick it like normal. Everything's fine. Okay. To be honest, with you. that's like one of the core values for me that kind of puts me at ease yeah. going home, just chilling with whether it's my brothers, my sister, you know, my mom, my dad, mm-hmm. my stepdad. doesn't matter, bro. As long as I'm around good company especially like i consider my family the best company around Mm -hmm. i'm fine i'm at ease that's like my true happiness i know you you have crafty which is your business for clothing right yeah does that make you happy yeah that's a like i'm passionate about crafty but to be honest with you it doesn't like my my version of happiness is just like essentially just being at peace Mm -hmm. you know like being at peace for me is just not having too much to think about not having too much to do at one point. I like keeping busy, but I also like doing the things that I enjoy doing, right? Okay. So it's whether it's being on my own, whether it's being around my family, like just being peaceful is my true happiness, right? Okay. And I think that to be honest with you, if you really look at if you really look at it, right? And everyone lives their life differently, first right. off, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%, 100%. Every, everybody has their own way of how they want to enjoy their life and how they want to be happy, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. For me, it doesn't take much, you know, as long as I'm with what I know best, then I can consider myself happy, mm-hmm. you know, but I'd like to hear your opinion as well. So when it comes to that, we're very similar. Okay. Like for me, happiness looks like being able to sustain the relationships that I have, either it be family, friends. It's because that's something that's going to last. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to that point, I always make sure that I spend quality time with my family. Like, I'm always out here having random dance battles with family members. Dance I'm always out here cooking for the What does a dance battle look like? Let me tell Bro, you. Don't, have to, don't worry about that. I need to know. I need to know. <laughs> don't worry about that. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it an impromptu dance? Or is it don't like, worry. No. We put on some, some, some Jamaican music in the background. Jamaican music. We go music. nuts. You're lady. You're lady. We go nuts. I fuck with it. I fuck with it. But yeah, you see the, the little things, man. That, yeah. That's what makes me happy. Like, seeing the people around me. Mm-hmm. and making sure that they're okay you mm-hmm. know and sustaining relationships with the people i love because though that's that's what makes me happy bro and it to, to that to that i want to like go back to what i was saying earlier to yeah. the people who think status and wealth and all these things makes them happy it's it's like it's such it's such a limiting thing because so? later later when your money is gone mm-hmm. is that is like you're just equating that to your to your mental health you know what i mean it's like it's that real happiness because at a certain point, you're not gonna have as much money as you had yesterday. But a lot of people like to to counter to counteract that point. Though a lot of people aren't thinking that they're gonna lose the material goods that they've earned in their lifetime, right? It's if gonna somebody, happen. It's gonna like, happen. Especially like if somebody's in like a position of like fame, mm-hmm. right? There's obviously gonna be coming a day where they're not gonna be famous anymore, right? But yeah. I don't think they're waking up thinking about it. I think they're just soaking in what they have as much as they can. Yeah. Right. And that kind of blinds them to think that this is forever but it's like you said it's a limited thing right mm. um, it only has an expiration date. It has a, yeah like I, my thing is you shouldn't be having happiness for things that it's so easy to obtain because your happiness the same way it came in it's gonna leave you the same way you know what i mean like that same happiness that came in two seconds when you're broke is gone 
that same happiness that you found on that website gone. You know, the same thing as that. I hear you. And to that point, like I, another aspect of why I think so much people are not happy today is because they compare their happiness with somebody else. I, I think I think that's something that you shouldn't be doing. Everybody should have their own specific components on what makes them happy. For me personally, it's family, yeah. it's doing things that I love, it's cooking, it's baking, it's going out for walks, having my, my earbuds in, yeah. and listening to podcasts, that makes me happy. To be honest with you, and I wanna tap back into the question you had earlier, the reason why I don't consider crafty to be one of my true, like it's, it's I wouldn't say it's the happiness in my life, mm-hmm. I'm very passionate about it, but over the course of two years, I've learned that there are negatives that come with that too. That lifestyle, living the lifestyle of a small business owner, there are days where you feel it's like hard, hard. you don't even want to do this, you yeah. know? So I would say that my passion is driving me and I'm motivated to do that, but I'm uncertain in the future of it. So I can't say that that is my true happiness. You know, it doesn't bring me the true peace that I was talking about earlier. You know, yeah. like being around my family, it's always going to be like that, 100%, no matter what, 100%, you know? 100%. So like, I consider those aspects of life and I'm, I'm I'm a very simple person you know like I don't really like for me I don't really know how to receive gifts sometimes yeah. you know so like material goods to me don't cons- I don't consider that like happiness you know I think that's like it's cool to have it's yeah. fun interesting but like you said there's an expiration date you know like Fox. you can get the coolest Xbox or PS5 game given to you today that you'd be you'll jumping be done. for joy. You'll be done in a month. It's and not like, gonna yeah. be that cool. The new the new Modern Warfare came out. I'm gonna I'm, I bought it. I'm one of those yeah, dumbasses that bought it. Yo, you heard that? <laughs> How dare you buy a game called Modern Warfare Two? No, it's not Modern Warfare Two. I never played the original Modern Warfare Two though. Okay. I, I started I started with Call of Modern Warfare Three. Have and... you been playing it already? Yeah. They got your ass, man. They got your ass. <laughs> but to that point, it makes yeah. me happy. Like I know, I, I know. A month from now, that that same happiness is not going to be there because the game got played out. I hear you. you know what and I mean? and and it's not it's not a knock on people who like material goods. A lot of people like material goods, and yeah. that does bring a certain level of happiness, it does, it right? Does, yeah. But to use that as what you consider your your true happiness in life, I think that's where people kind of get misconstrued. You know, facts. And it's 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 really about understanding where you're at your most best self mm-hmm. and how you get there once you understand that then i think you can start putting aside material goods and like actual um like actual items that you own and start really valuing like experiences and like connection 100%. with people and stuff like and that and i think you know? that's that's where happiness comes from mm-hmm. and the way I, the way i know that and another point to that is i want to go back to what i said earlier people compare their happiness you go on social media you see highlights of everything awesome that person is doing yeah it's you know? like a highlight reel for everyone's yeah, and life you, and you see that you compare it to your own happiness and you're like wow am i am, am, I am, doing I, am I, i'm not as happy as that person mm-hmm. so how do i get to that person's level of happiness mm-hmm. not knowing that that person is only putting the highlights and what they could be dealing with whatever at home yeah you know yeah you're comparing yourself to an online happiness that's not that could not actually be real behind the scenes you know okay and i think that's what's wrong with a lot of our youth today mm-hmm. where they're not happy or content with their level of what makes them happy so they go for the bigger the better the this and the that mm-hmm. and I, I i just think that there should be components for everybody in the because what makes you happy what makes me happy is not the same i know you don't like to cook mm-hmm. you never picked up a, no, <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm not in the kitchen like that <laughs> yeah but that makes me happy i can make a nice sandwich uh, yeah i can, I can, I can bang a sandwich up it's, it's probably it's really but... easy to make a sandwich <laughs> <laughs> you don't gotta say it like that, man. Come on, come on, man. No, but up to that point, it's like yeah. I think what people need to understand and comprehend is you need to find out what makes you happy, and you need to run with that. Yeah. And something I something I want to kind of jump into is I was watch I was watching a TED talk yeah. about this guy. Shout out to TED Talks, by the way, man. Those, <laughs> those have helped me so much because they give you such a deeper level of thinking for certain Yeah, they things, talk about know? the most randomest things that you would never ever kind of bring to light. But what I'm, I'm saying, into those, but what I'm ahead. saying is there was this study about 724 male men mm-hmm. that were followed for 75 years. Okay. Right? So throughout the 75 years, they were followed from age 18 to their expiry date. So whenever they passed away. Yeah. And what... When did this take place? Sorry, it was around like the the thirties, the forties. Okay, so years, years. Yeah, ago. way long ago, like mm-hmm. around the war times, you know. Okay. So it was around that time period where it happened, and these people's lives were being followed. And the way that they were kind of keeping up with them is every two years, mm-hmm. they would kind of have like this interview with all these men, and they would follow up with them to check to see how they're doing, 
how their employment is, how their family is, how their mental health is. They just keep up with everything with this person, Every right? two years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one of the most important things that came out of this is for those who reach the age 60 to 75, yeah. they value things way differently than they did when they were younger. And one of the major takeaways from this entire study was the lasting relationships is what keeps you going. Lasting relationships. Lasting relationships. With because they, they followed people of the likes of like lawyers, uh, social workers. They followed even a past president. And they followed like US president? Yeah, US president. Oh, shit. Okay. And they followed all these individual types of people. And for people who reached a certain age, mm-hmm. they noticed that happiness was different. Mm-hmm. Like at the beginning, they were all about their grind. They were all about making sure that they had money to provide for family. They were making sure that, you know, making mm-hmm. sure all their essentials were fine. Mm-hmm. But when shit hit the fan and they didn't have their health was deteriorating, yeah. they noticed that happiness in reality comes from the lasting relationships that you were, you were able to maintain throughout your, your life, you know? Interesting. And that was something that they all made sure to let the, the people who are researching them know because if there's any advice that they can give to the younger generation, mm-hmm. it was to keep the relationships that you have sustained over a period of time because that is what keeps you going. Those people who had relationships past a certain age, mm-hmm. not only did it affect their health better, but it affected their brain better. Like those when people, you say relationships, you mean like spouses? Spouses, um, friendships, yeah. like kids. Like okay, they, so any real <laughs> lasting relationships. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that was kind of the takeaway of that. And what it really helped me realize is we're so focused on the wrong initiatives, bro. Like mm-hmm. happiness shouldn't come in the form of all these difficult things that we're trying to obtain, but it should be in the journey that we're following. Okay. Like, you know, like we should fall in love with or find happiness in the little things, you know? Like, give me an example. Like, bro, like going for a walk, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, like being like, for example, like the fact that we're doing this podcast together, like mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's happiness for me, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I, I think people are always going towards the bigger, the better, when they should stop and smell the flowers. To be honest with you, it, you hit it right on the money, fam. It stems from being grateful and practicing gratitude as Gosh, well, yeah. right? Like taking a walk could just be literally a non-existent thought in somebody's head mm-hmm. while they're doing it, you know? But somebody else could be like, oh, I'm on a nice walk right now, you know? It's pretty nice, yeah. I'm enjoying it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And that's pretty much gratitude, right? And being grateful and just enjoying the moments that you're in, you know, mm-hmm. for what they are. Those shared experiences that you have with people can be alone as well, mm-hmm. right? And you brought up like taking a walk and like, I think also like, you know, like listening to music and like uh, playing with your pets and things of those sort too. I think those can bring you happiness. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the hidden gem in that study that you were talking about is that there's people that have to go through life to realize that, but are willing to and want to share that information with the youth and the people that are younger, right? 100%. But I feel like society makes it very hard for us because of the, the added yeah, layer of yeah. social media. Social media ruined it, man. Yeah. <laughs> social media ruined it. It's like... Prior to social media, because to be honest, we grew up in social media. We, yeah. we didn't know actually what life was behind that. Mm-hmm. But what I'm noticing is our past generations, like they were kind of more happier. Yeah. Like I feel like, I, and I don't have the numbers behind this, so I'm not going to say for certain, but I feel like depression really skyrocketed when social media came in the picture. It's because I can be at home, mm-hmm. just chilling, doing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Open my phone, go on somebody's store on Instagram and see them having an awesome time. And, and like, I start thinking, what am I doing in my life? What am I And another, like, for yeah. example, if I see somebody, like when I was younger, when I see somebody vacationing in LA or mm-hmm. like Africa and yeah, like, thinking, oh, yo, they're, they're having such a good time. Mm-hmm. And why am I out here not doing that? You know? Mm-hmm. And it could it, just be, even, it can't even, it doesn't even have to be somebody you respect. It could be a yeah. twerp. You know, yeah. somebody that's a weirdo. You know, you're like, how is he, or how is she? Living that life and I'm here. Facts. And to that you know? point, I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying... But that's, a flawed, that's a flawed way of thinking. Exactly. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. For younger, no, thinking that you're, you're comparing yourself to these people. And to us, we, we probably have celebrities at the, the highest level of status for oh, human for beings, sure. right? For but sure. these same celebrities who are out here showcasing the highlights of their life, showing so much money, women, power, everything. Mm-hmm. These same people are not really happy behind closed doors. You yeah, know? You make a great point. Like, yeah. because like uh, what comes with all that, there's all that negatives. And they're not showing the negatives to their fans. They're only showing the best things, yeah. you know? Yeah. And with the, all, we don't know that th- these people are going through all these levels of sadness and depression mm-hmm. because they're out here because their team is only showing you what you want them to know because they're profiting off this, this person yeah. and that person is making money for a larger group of people. You know yes. what I mean? And you know what's another factor about it too is that, and, and this, historically speaking, 
since the addition of social media, I think it's brought to life a lot more celebrity figures in our society, yeah. right? And back in like the 80s and 90s, there were celebrities, there were figures out there, but it was so there were so less of them that it was hard to get like mesmerized or idolized into their lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. There was more people on a day-to-day basis that you could respect and have that yeah. like uh, profound look mm-hmm. towards than there is now, right? Because now you can just look at your, you can just go on your phone right now, go to uh, someone's Instagram or some famous person's Instagram, and you can go to their following and then see a bunch of other famous people you didn't even know, mm-hmm. and then you can just be like, oh shit, that blue guy looks marks. cool, yeah. Blue check as soon as you see the blue check mark, you can, just, you know, how many celebrities I just discovered online, and I'm just like, oh shit, this person's dope. I don't know any idea who they to are. To that point, you know something I found out recently. Blue check marks, uh, of course, they're kind of looked at better, right? Yeah. But you know what people without blue check marks are called? We need that crafty blue check mark. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's Man, you happen. don't need that. I'll, throw, don't it. Need I'll throw it in the air. I don't care. <laughs> throw it out in the air. It's got to come. <laughs> no, but what I was saying is people who don't have blue check marks, they're called normies. Normies? They're called normies, bro. No way. And th- th- like for you and me, that's funny, right? That oh, I'm jokes. called a normie. But there are kids these days who they're call called it normie. Like, no way. That is, bro. And the fact that this blue check mark makes you a different person. Yeah, it's, like, it solidifies you. It doesn't, like, for me, like, I know we're making a joke about yeah, this, but yeah. this blue check mark doesn't make you a better person. It, it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't bring you anything. If anything, it brings you a lot of job opportunities, which well, is it, awesome. It increases you your know? position on the social it ladder. Does, it does. Right? But you're right. In your day to day life, nothing changes. It doesn't change. You're still the same person you woke up that you did. You know what I mean? Like, now with a blue check. <laughs> Just, it's like you change your laces or something. You know, it's not You're the same thing. person, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And like to that point, I feel like people are so lost these days with trying to find out what makes them happy when it's the little things in front of them that they should be appreciated. And it goes back to what we were saying, bro. Like just practicing gratitude in your life can go sure. so far, bro. Yeah. Like it's not always the bigger, the better, yeah. the blah blah. It's it's like what what what's around me right now that I can appreciate. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And people are lost in the sauce and assuming that they, they need to have a life like Kylie Jenner, who Science. has an airplane, like she has a plane on, that she goes to. Yo, did you know Drake took a plane to, uh, whatchamacallit, what city was it? To a city that was 40 minutes away from Toronto. Driving? A plane. 40 minutes driving distance? Yeah, 40 minutes driving distance. So what was that, like a two minute like plane, Like right? minute plane. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know the planes have to get fueled up and all yeah. that? That's the crazy. amount of money, it, it's just like people are saying, since I don't have that, mm-hmm. I'm not as happy as Drake. And if I'm not, I'm not as happy as Drake. My life's not it. My life's not it. You know I mean? Yo, that's crazy to think, man. To be honest with you, like, yeah, I can understand. To everybody should have a hunger to want more, mm-hmm. to be better, to grow, right? But to not value your life and your accomplishments and who you are as a person kind of diminishes the life, the factor of like life. You know, enjoying life. You can't really enjoy life like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So practicing gratitude helps a lot. It does, right? It does. And I wanted to share a small little story that, that I went through personally, fam. Let it's gonna sound so Let dumb. Hear, bro. This is gonna sound so <laughs> dumb, but here we go. Yo, I used to hate, hate my commutes to work. Okay. I used to dread waking up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I used to dread getting on the bus. I used. To, I'm talking like right out of college, first start, first started working, career jobs and stuff. 22, 21 yeah. ish, you know. Bro, I used to hate those rides. Okay. Hate them, and I would have my music on. You know, I'd be listening to whatever, like trying to make the best of it. It's only till after I realized or I started trying to practice self like gratitude in my life in like maybe like 25, 24 ish. Mm -hmm. Once I started to practice gratitude and like mindfulness and just being present in the moment, those commutes started becoming so much fun to me. I'm like, you know what? I started telling myself any chance, any moment that I see myself not liking the commute that I'm in, just remind myself what I'm doing presently Mm -hmm. and that I enjoy doing this. You know, if I'm listening to an artist that I like, Oh shit! I'm bumping this artist. I'm liking. I like this song. Let me bump the oh, shit out of this. You know. Sure. Oh shit! I'm passing by a really nice looking neighborhood. This is the scenic route of the trip. Let me go and enjoy the outside of it. Exactly, you know? yeah. Oh, it's a sunrise. It's a beautiful sunrise. Let me go catch the sunrise. Let me see if I can take a photo. Fox. Little shit like that. Just practicing those little bits of gratitude mm-hmm. made me so much happier on those commutes. So I can imagine. And now yeah. it got to a point where I look forward to commutes, long trips on the TTC, or whether it's a long drive or long highway ride. I don't care. I, I will welcome it now because I know that there's little little parts of it that I can take and be grateful for, and those make me happy. Facts. You know, so like it like it stems from being grateful, right? One hundred percent. And to that point, like, bro, I I didn't realize how much I like commuting mm-hmm. until like COVID happened. 
Yeah. And then really. I lost because that one hour that I hated waking up early for, that I used to go to work for, mm-hmm. that was me time. Yeah, I it's you to, time. I, jumped, yeah. I used to put like my air budget and listen mm-hmm. to whatever I wanted to listen to. Mm-hmm. And then I put myself in the mind sheet of work. Right. But now I wake up 15 minutes before work yeah, and I'm man. in work mode. I know, you know what I mean? man. <laughs> you're like, still I'm getting in. the dust out of your eyes. You know, you're like, you're, your mouth tastes like toothpaste. You're like, God damn, man. And I'm like, I got I to gotta get to it. I got to turn it on. You know? So yeah. it's, it's to that point that you're making. It's mm-hmm. the little things that you have to appreciate around you that, that are going to help you in the long term rather than the, the amazing things that you think that you will make you happy. But in reality, it's not, it's not up to par. You know and it's, I mean? it's, it's very much easier said than done. I will say that. However, yeah. No matter who you are, there are little stuff in your life that you're probably over th- overseeing yeah. or stepping over that yeah. are really great. That you no, to that point, like I want to share that a, a little story as well. Mm-hmm. When I was 18, I went to I went to university. Mm-hmm. I thought I'll get this degree. I'm gonna get that job. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have money. I'm gonna be independent. That's what's gonna make me happy. Mm-hmm. Fast forward. <laughs> I already know where the story said. Fast forward. Yeah. I did all that. Yeah. Mashallah, congrats, by the way. Appreciate it. Yeah. You're, you're in the shape, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we just got to let people know, you know, like, we did that. But yes, yeah. all, all, I'm, at, I'm at the stage where I am what, what I wanted to be when I was 18. Mm-hmm. And that didn't bring me happiness. Mm-hmm. If anything, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say money, financial freedom didn't make me happy because mm-hmm. it, it did to a component. Mm-hmm. But I'm still the same person with or without money because I don't value money the same way other people do okay. I don't, money doesn't cripple me money helps me with initiatives to kind of make myself a little bit more free you know I what agree. i mean I agree. so like you need to find something that you can look forward to that you can actually find happiness in you know i what mean i agree and let me ask you this too this is a, it might be a little bit of a personal question but i want your opinion. go ahead i want your opinion go ahead bro all right what do you think is the next steps because now we're in our late 20s right yeah, we're going yeah. into we're inshallah we're going to be in our 30s next and then our 40s and then our 50s and so on right what do you think the next stages of happiness look like or like a, trying to like because we're always going to be looking for happiness yeah. essentially as we are right what do you think that looks like in the later stages of life so i have steps so the first thing is i want to become financially good enough in order to just support my family that's okay. one. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm at a good stage right now. But as the I, I sole a, person? Yeah, the sole person. Like I don't want my parents to worry about anything. Okay. That's number one. Number yeah. two, I want kids. <laughs> like, all right. I'm on TikTok all the time, and TikTok algor- algorithm knows that. Yeah, I family have TikTok. Fever. Yeah, I'm, I'm family I'm talk. Seeing these little babies run around. And baby talk. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that. Naturally, so I, inshallah, I want to be able to make my own inshallah. family in terms of, and I know that's that's what happiness looks like for me. You okay. know, like having having a wife, having kids. After that, though. After that, like I, I, I want to see like at that point, I feel mm-hmm. like my happiness will be very much connected to my kids for a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I want to, I want to see their development. I want to see them happy. So fatherhood, essentially. Yeah, father. Like I think, I think that's my next stage of what happiness looks like, and I'm so excited for mm-hmm. that. Fatherhood is what makes me happy. Like inshallah, I, I want it. I want there to be a time where I have little ones running around. Yeah. And that whole idea, like, that, 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 that idea, kind of gets me giddy. Cause I'm like, man, I can't wait to have these experiences with my kids where I'm able to cook with them, bake I with them. I can't wait to them, see you know? a little Tommy <laughs> running around myself. I mean, like, and I'm gonna take them, yo. I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna make sure that my wife is six feet five, that my kids go into the NBA. Oh, you're going, you're going straight league bound. NBA, bro. I'll tell I, you right now, I'm gonna make sure that they're dribbling a basketball at the young age of like one or two. One or two. One or two. I'm gonna have a the basketball league bigger than that. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care. They're gonna live out body. You can teach them how to go between the legs of lions. Put it all the way over. They're gonna live You're out body, fam. I'm gonna make sure they live out what I couldn't do. Wow. And then they'll. Why your kid do? become like a chess player? If Just because you said that. Uh, I play chess. I wouldn't mind. You're but you know player. what? I would. <laughs> <laughs> he does it all. <laughs> Chill, man. Can you leave us a sport? I think to that point, like I, I want to have that same experiences that my kids had, like my I had with my dad that my, I'm going to have with my kids. Like my dad taught me how to play chess when I was like two. Dope. Dope. Like I didn't even know what was moving around, you mm-hmm. know? And right now I, I like to think I'm the best Somali person on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> but to that point, what is next level of happiness look like for you? You know, it's it, the fatherhood aspect of it. It's making me think about how life's going to be in the future. And we are going to be tied to like, being a father you know essentially right but i also think that another layer of it is being a husband too you know like essentially we'll be living with a woman for the foreseeable future of our lives right so there's gonna 
there's going to come an aspect of you learning that too, right? And, and, and finding happiness in that as well, right? So I think that is another layer that's added on to it too. But I think for, for us as men, being like, you know, the quote unquote protector and whatnot, and, you know, having that role essentially tied to you, I think maintaining your health is going to be very much in your mind like you know like if you can if you can be 65 inshallah and say yo you're healthy you just went to a checkup the doctor said nothing wrong with you you're gonna feel great you know like that's a layer of happiness too you're on the health grind i'm the protein shake this guy for me i'm protein guys life changing i'll tell you right now one year from now you're gonna be huge yo (laughs) as was telling me bro as soon as i start hanging out with you my life quality is just gonna increase and it has i'm not gonna lie thank you i appreciate that i got you i appreciate that but uh, inshallah like uh, for me personally like to the point that you just made like fitness is super important to me Mm -hmm. i want to be able to move the same way that i'm moving right now when i'm very much older yeah because inshallah i want i want to be a grandfather Mm -hmm. i want to be able to play with them you know what i mean i'm not gonna be out here just sitting down watching television yeah when i actively go outside take them to the park you 100%, know like i that's fitness is super important to me that's what makes me happy you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and inshallah i want to get to that point where i'm always consistently working on things that you know that's just for me you, you know, know to be honest with you and I, before we like kind of wrap it up i i wish more brothers around our age would like i'm talking specifically around our age like the later 20s guys i wish more of us would realize that we're heading towards a more responsible life in our 30s and 40s especially being a father and like the added layer of being a husband and then taking care of ourselves like we're gonna have more responsibility so we should start putting down our love for all these material things because they're like you said expiration date you know like we we have to start realizing that now before it gets too late i think Mm -hmm. you know because then you might be in your mid 30s early 40s Maybe even later, and then thinking, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't have bought that $50,000 car, you know, when I was 39 years old. So, what I want our generation to really take away is that you need to start having happiness from internal factors and not from stuff that has happened externally. Because eventually, that external stuff is going to go out the window, Mm -hmm. and the only thing that's going to be running you is in your your internal thoughts and you by yourself. And when you're in closed doors, having that $50,000 car that you thought made other people happy, and now you're $50,000 in debt. Did you, are you, nah, that's that's pretty, happy? Right? Are yeah. you really happy? Yeah. So I think if, if anybody in anything could take anything from this video is you need to start working on yourself and mm-hmm. find things that individually that you can make you, yourself happy. You know what yeah. I mean? Because eventually that's all you're going to have in the personal connections that you have around you. Because yeah. these stuff, the social media stuff, it's not going to be there. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's fake. You can have 100,000 followers. And when you turn that phone off, go to sleep. Are you really happy? Exactly. You know? Yeah. So that's, that's all I want to say. And to, I'll, I'll let you say one piece for, first, but the point I want to, the last thing I want to make is I, I need people to start working on themselves prior to worrying about the other things that affect them. I know? agree wholeheartedly, honestly. And to, to, to kind of wrap it up, honestly, be grateful, you nice. know, be grateful for what you have. Like there's, like I said, there's little aspects of everybody's life mm-hmm. that you all know that you are taking for granted at some point that you could just be like, well, I'm grateful for this. I'm happy that I have this in my life. And it, you know, will make your life a little bit better. Like crafty. Like crafty. (laughs) We need that blue check. (laughs) We need that blue check, baby. Come on, man. Come on, you're not going to ruin it for us. Are you kidding me? You know, you could have probably got it. I am thinking about it. (laughs) Through all that mishap that was happening. that shit. (laughs) Really. Don't worry. It's so love, fam. That's right. I I hope you're nothing but success for that company. Appreciate it. And just so you know, Mm -hmm. feel free to put it in your little thing. This Tuesday, guys. You want pants like this? (laughs) You want a hoodie like this? You know where to go. Craft.ca, man. (laughs) <laughs> C-R-A-P-H-T dot C-A. This Tuesday, we've got three different pairs of pants dropping at midnight. Craft dot C-A. C-R-A-P-H-T dot C-A. We've got three different pairs of pants. Baggy fit. Dark brown. Gray. Black. Stars on it. The best quality you've seen yet. Come on, man. We're leveling up. And way much, so much more to come. You guys have no idea. Like, the plans we have to wrap up 2022. I'm just going to end it right there. <laughs> going to end it right there. <laughs> You see that? I know. I can tell that's what makes you happy, bro. It's like happen. I can tell yeah, just out. that enthusiasm. I'm not that enthusiastic when I talk about my work stuff. I jump <laughs> on the chair, man. I don't care, bro. But like I said, November 15th, Tuesday at midnight, craft.ca. Go get it, everybody. Uh, that's perfect. But just, I just want to thank everybody for listening to this episode, and we're out.